channels. On this channel, I like to talk about literature, readathons, and many other bookish topics. There are only three days left till the end of October 2020, and I don't know about you, but I still have some challenges to complete. So I have found 10 short books to help us all get through these last days of October. There are going to be 10 books in total, two of them are governess novels, two of them are plays, one of them is a poetry collection, and the rest of them are all supernatural books, which go well with the Halloween situation we are in. The first novel is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. So this book was first published in 1847. It is 251 pages long. And Agnes Grey is a governess. She works for two families, both of which are very demanding and not so rewarding. And as for the book itself, there is a style similarity with Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre, though this novel is much shorter, to the point, and less wishy-washy romantic. You can easily read it in one day. Number two is Miss Meredith by Amy Levi. This one is 128 pages long, published in 1889. It is one of her three novels. This one tackles the life of a governess. Amy Levi herself was part of the New Woman Movement, a feminist idea of the late 19th century. Her first novel, The Romance of a Shop, a much larger book, is considered a New Woman novel. Miss Meredith is considered a governess novel. Number three is The Mystery of Mrs. Blankero by Mrs. Oliphant. First published in 1890, it is 198 pages long and it is categorized as a short story. This is about a woman left on her own to carry on the household responsibilities. It's considered a very un-Victorian story because instead of the book ending in a union, this story ends with the breakup of a marriage. Number 4. The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. It is 111 pages long, being first published in 1886. It falls under the category of gothic novella and under the genre of a psychological thriller. The author introduces a character with a split personality. At times, this main character is nice and sociable, but also he seems fascinated by the evil on the inside. Number 5. Ligeti Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde it is 70 pages long, published in 1893. The reader follows Lady Windermere while she tries to make sense of the very awkward, almost scandalous position her husband dragged her into. With Wilde's typical sense of drama, ironies, wit and romances, fortunately this play has a happy ending. Six, An Ideal Husband by Oscar Wilde, published in 1893 as well, it is 78 pages long. I love the audiobook adaptation of this play, it is twisted, ironic, hilarious and witty. There is a blackmail scheme threatening to break a marriage apart due to the high moral standards of both the parties. Meanwhile, as a secondary plot, we meet a romantic couple of young lovers, lovers and also gossiping ladies with questionable morals and an overprotecting father. Number 
Number 7. Goblin Market, The Prince's Progress and Other Poems by Cristina Rossetti. It is 264 pages long, published in 1862. Though the author wrote mostly poetry for children and works with a religious undertone, modern day scholars have been able to find aspects of feminism in her works. The Lifted Veil by George Eliot, first published in 1859, it is a 110 pages long novella. It's considered horror fiction. This is George Eliot's only work in which he uses a first-person narrator and also the only one concerning the supernatural. You follow Latimer, a man cursed with the ability to see the future, as he himself tells us. Open Door by Margaret Oliphant, published in 1881. This 64 pages long, containing two horror stories. This Scottish writer was known for realism and supernatural topics in her works. These two are considered to be two of her best horror stories. The Uninhabited House by J. H. Riddle. It is 168 pages, first published in 1875. It is a novella-sized supernatural story. As the name reveals, there is a haunted house and someone has to get to the bottom of this mystery by living in said house. So this uninhabited house has a name and it is we were whole. As you may remember from my first YouTube video, the booktube newbie tag, I don't really enjoy reading horror, and as we have seen, many of these short stories and novellas are horror, or at least thriller-like. I guess I have to make an exception for this Halloween, and instead of reading something cute, spooky, I will have to go for something horror spooky. All for the sake of October 2020. Best of luck to all of you. If you have any recommendations for a short novel written as letters, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, it would be amazing if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos of the kind.